Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. It's a pleasure to welcome you to Georgetown. Uh, this morning, we have the privilege of introducing to all of you our head men's basketball coach, Patrick Ewing. This is a special moment for our university and for our men's basketball program. 33 years after winning the NCAA National Championship, number 33 is coming home. Coach Ewing embodies the tradition of excellence that defines our program, a tradition that he helped to define three decades ago, a tradition that with his experience, preparation, and character, he is uniquely capable of adding new dimensions to our head men's, as our men, head men's basketball coach. He's a committed teacher and mentor, a talented coach and a passionate leader with a deep understanding of the game of basketball and what it takes to excel. His extraordinary career as a player and as a coach has been defined by his talent, his determination, and his work ethic. 17 years excelling as one of professional basketball's greatest players ever, and 15 years of coaching preparation, working, studying, and coaching alongside some of basketball's greatest have led to this day. He offers our students unparalleled depth of knowledge about basketball as it is played today, a track record of winning at the highest levels of competition, and a commitment to bringing out the very best in each of our young people. And he has a deep connection to this place, to Georgetown, to our values, to our tradition, to our community. Coach, we're excited and grateful for the impact that we are confident you will continue to have on Georgetown basketball. Coach Ewing, it is my pleasure to welcome you back to the Hilltop. Thank you. Before I invite Lee Reed, our Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, to the podium, I wish to express my deep appreciation to our board members, Vice Chair Paul Tagliabu and Kevin Warren, and to Lee for their outstanding service in leading the search process that led to Patrick's selection. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to invite Lee Reed to offer remarks and then to introduce our coach. Thank you, Jack. Welcome, everybody. Um, what a great day for Georgetown basketball, Georgetown University. Uh, just 12 short days ago, we set out to find the 18th head coach of men's basketball in Georgetown University's history. As we embarked on this important task, we embraced the expectations that have consistently defined our program for generations. One, that our program will represent this great institution with integrity. Two, that our student athletes will achieve academically and prepare for life beyond the hilltop. And three, that our program will be competitive on a national level. It is within that context that we set out to find our next leader of our basketball program. The criteria for the job were based upon the following parameters. We wanted someone who embraced the values of Georgetown University that believed as deeply as we believe in the balance between student and athlete. We wanted someone who embraced the rich tradition of Georgetown basketball, someone who was comfortable with that tradition. We wanted someone who would set a high standard as a leader of our young men. After all, that is why we are here. We wanted someone who understood and was passionate about doing things the right way, the only way, the Georgetown way, as it relates to building a nationally competitive program. We wanted someone who, through their personal experience, understood what it took to be successful at the highest levels. We wanted someone with a track record of developing young men, mind, bodies, and spirit. After a comprehensive national search, ably led by Vice Chairman Paul Tagliabu and assisted by fellow board member Kevin Warren, who I'm grateful for as well, it became obvious to us who the best person for this challenge was. <laughs> you know, I, I've been in the Georgetown community for seven years, but, but obviously have, have known from afar Patrick Ewing and all that he's meant to Georgetown University and to the game of basketball. 
we could spend a lot of time talking about his accomplishments as a player. Three-time consensus first-team All-American national champion in 1984. The first lottery pick in NBA history. 11-time NBA All-Star. Member of the original Dream Team. Me top 50 player in NBA history and a 2008 Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame inductee. He covered it all. But during this process, I quickly learned a great deal more about Patrick and his accomplishments as a coach. I came to know him as a professional who has worked as hard to become a great coach as he worked to become a great player. A man who took the demanding and humbling path that would best prepare him for an opportunity such as this. Patrick has honed his craft for 15 years, coaching elite level athletes, many the same ages as the members of our current pro in our current program, collegiate age players. What I also found out during this process is that Patrick was not only prepared to coach and lead a program, but that he had his own distinct vision for where Georgetown basketball should go. This program is our program, and it's his program. Pat was not anointed here, nor given a pass through a process. He earned this opportunity the old-fashioned way, the only way he knows how. He earned it through hard work and preparation. And so we're really happy and excited to welcome Patrick back home. And before I turn it over to introduce him to you, we'd like to have a quick photo opportunity here. If you'll recall when Patrick came to Georgetown, when he signed to come to Georgetown yeah. in 1981, yeah. this was the photo. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm honored to introduce uh, Patrick Ewing. Coach, welcome home. Thank you. First of all, it's great to be back. Um, I can remember the, the speech that I gave when, um, uh, here, when I, my, myself and my mother, we were at Sat Sanders restaurant in Boston. And I remember saying, after considering all the facts, my decision is to attend Georgetown University. Half the room walked out. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, they were expecting me to say Boston College, but I made the right choice. Uh, I just want to say that I'm very honored and, and pleased to be named head coach at Georgetown Basketball. We've had a rich tradition led by the man in the back, Coach Thompson, uh, his vision, his uh, hard work, his dedication has helped to uh, Lift the program to where it's where it's where to lift the program where it's gotten, and it's uh, my job to to add on to that legacy. Uh, you know, JT3 I thought did an outstanding job when he was here. Uh, had a few down years, uh, and they 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 decided to make a change. Um, can't take anything away from the the success and the things that he has accomplished, but it's a new era now and. It is my job, along with uh, these uh, two gentlemen that's sitting here beside me, uh, to help and build, rebuild the program and try to get it to prominence that it was at before. Um, I would like to thank these, these two gentlemen for believing in me and giving me the opportunity uh, to coach this fine institution. Uh, and I'm here and dedicated to roll up my sleeve and get to work. Just want to say thank you, and I'm honored. Thank you, Coach. Um, at this time, we will open it up for Q and A with Coach with Coach Ewing. I forgot, I forgot my my towel. <laughs> We will open it up for, for Q&A with Coach Ewing, Director of Athletics, Lee Reed, and University President DeJoya. We have a wireless mic 
we would ask you to please wait until that wireless mic has been handed to you. Raise your hand and identify yourself from name and outlet, please. Hey, Coach Patrick, uh, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. Just what drew you to the college game after having spent a number of years in, in the NBA? What drew me to the college game? Well, I think it was, if it was any other university, I wouldn't be doing this. But it's my alma mater. It's Georgetown. Uh, you know, I'm a Hoya. I just thought it was a, a great opportunity to come back and to try to help to uh, rebuild the program. Uh, any, on the, any other university, I would, the answer would be no. Uh, I'm going to stay uh, in the NBA. But I just thought it was it's something that I needed to do. Uh, Coach Mark Plotkin, uh, the Georgetowner and the Hill. Um, I believe on December 16, 1981, at the old Cap Center, uh, Georgetown played GW. Um, I think you played in that game. Uh, it's been 36 years. Yesterday, Councilmember Evans passed a resolution or introduced a resolution for a Ward II Classic that Georgetown played GW and resume that rivalry. Would you be in favor of doing that? That is something I, I'm not uh, at the liberty to, to discuss right now. This is just my first. I haven't even really started my, my, my started the job. They, my job is yet. But uh, you know that's something that Lee and I would sit down and discuss uh, when the time is appropriate. Uh, Patrick Ben Standard with SB Nation. Uh, Lee Reed mentioned you brought you mentioned a distinct vision to him of how you want to do things right. with this program. Obviously, you're so connected with Big Coach. What is a distinct vision for you, meaning coming to this program? Well, it, it, it's my vision that you know to try to play a style of ball that's going to be conducive to, the similar to the to the, the, uh, the the style that we play in the NBA. I want it to be up tempo, uh, push the ball, uh, shoot uh, threes when if you have them. But it, it's, it's similar to the way that we play in Charlotte. There's more, a more up tempo pace and all, similar to what we did when I was here when we have opportunities to trap. But also, we are, we're going to have to go out and get the guys that who are have the ability to do all these things. Ron Bailey, Rivals.com. Um, how are you prepared to deal with the world, the recruiting world, which has changed drastically since you were recruited? Well, I don't think it's changed that much. <laughs> you know, I was the when I came out, I was the most highly recruited uh, player. Uh, but you know, I, what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put my put around myself a, a, a great staff who has the ability to go out and, and recruit and uh, teach me all the things I need to know until I get uh, up to speed in terms of uh, recruiting. But I don't see anything different. I'm, it's all about going out and selling your program, and I think that I, I'm a great salesman. Howard Fendrich with the Associated Press. What, what do you consider the biggest challenge facing you, and what will be the toughest part of, as you said, rebuilding this program? But I don't think, uh, that when in terms of challenge, I say the challenge would be what, what he, this gentleman just asked me in terms of learning how to, to go out and recruit. But I'm going to uh, surround myself with good, great, good enough people to be able to not only teach me, but also their, their uh, have uh, they can reach out in the community and try to uh, to get these these guys. You know, DC, the DC area, DC, Baltimore, Virginia area is the hotbed of of great talent. And I remember when we were at uh, when we had things rolling here. There's no one, none of the great players in DC in this area was able to get out of DC when when uh, coach was at at uh, at the helm and. Uh, that's my job to try to get us get get us back to that level that these great players try to stay home. Megan O'Brien with the Big East Digital Network, Coach. The league has changed quite a bit since you cha since you played here. But what is your impression of the newly configured Big East, and how much are you looking forward to coaching against Chris Mullen? Well, I'm looking forward to clo uh, coaching him. You know, I, I was I was joking with someone on my way into the. Uh, into the to the press conference, I said, you know, we need to get back to the way it was. You know, no one liked us. Hoya paranoia, uh, smacking people down. <laughs> you know, just get back to the old biggies where where it was a, a, rum, a rough rumbling tumble uh, biggies. But no, I'm looking forward to you know to playing Chris, 
Uh, he's a person that I reached out to when um, when I was talking about you know, thinking about coming uh, uh, to Georgetown. He gave me some great advice, and you know, the Big East is the Big East. You know, Georgetown is when you talk about the Big East, people think about Georgetown, uh, even though we're not. Uh, at a full strength right now, but we're still Georgetown. Coach Tyler Pree, the Georgetown voice. Uh, you've obviously been a student and player here, an alum, and now head coach. How has your perspective as being a Hoya changed in, in those years? My perspective of being a Hoya has is, is never changed. Uh, like I said before, this is a great in institution. I think these guys are great students, a very good student athlete. Um, my mother, when, uh, when, it, when I was coming out of high school, one of the things she told me that she wanted me to get an education. And I got a great education here at Georgetown. Uh, anyone who comes here, that's our, our goal is to make sure that they graduate. My kids are here. My son graduated. My daughter, she's a senior here. Uh, you know, so the tradition is still here. Uh, my, my family's here. Uh, this was one of, uh, for some of the, the best years of my life. I came to college a boy and I left a man uh, uh, under Coach Thompson. He gave me the opportunity to, to grow, not only as an athlete, but also as a person. Met some great guys here, some of my teammates from, uh, from back then, they're still here, they're still my, my friends today. Uh, you know, so I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a close uh, net network or family, and you know, I'll be counting on them to, uh, 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 counting on them for their support as, also, all the, the, the Georgetown alumni uh, for their support to help to rebuild this program. Second row. Coach Heather McDonough, NBC4. Um, once coach, that school parted ways with Coach Thompson, how quickly did things move for you? And second part to that, um, is this kind of the easiest decision and also possibly the hardest decision you had to make knowing about your NBA aspirations, but knowing you know, Georgetown is, is home for you? Well, I'm not going to say it was, it was an easy or a hard decision. I just thought it was a great, a great fit. Um, they let uh, JT3 go, uh, you know, it's funny because I thought that I, got, I felt like I got fired. Uh, my son is on, was on the staff, so naturally, uh, you know, I felt for him. I, I've been knowing him since he, you know, we both were young growing up. I remember us growing up playing uh, in McDonough Gym when we were both young. And the fact that he got let go, it was, it was, it hurt. But. You know, then I thought about it a couple of days. I reached out to Jack and let him know that, uh, you know, I thought that it was a great opportunity for me to come back. Uh, this is something that I want. Uh, and I got, then I got involved in the process, went through all the interviewing process, spent some long, long times on the phone with the, with the, commu with the committee. <laughs> and uh, I told Jack today when I came in, and this is the first time I saw him from when, I, when we had our last meeting was he, had, he has a great game face because uh, uh, when I, after I left that meeting, I, I called Coach Thompson and said, Coach, uh, I don't know. I don't think I, don't think I got it. <laughs> I don't think I got it. And then Lee called me the next day. I'm like, don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> don't mess with me. I'm like, don't mess with me. But uh, yes, I wanted to be an NBA coach. Uh, I worked extremely hard uh, to be uh, to get that uh, to get to that point in my career, but I thought that this was a great opportunity, and I took full advantage of it. Last question. Have you had a chance to talk to the team, and if and what you say to them? If you haven't, what do you plan to say to them? Yes, I spoke to the team yesterday. Uh, just told them that last last year is over. It's over. I'm not sure who's going to be staying. I know there's some people talking about leaving. So once we, I'm going to meet with them tomorrow, and we, we're all going to sit down individually and, and discuss what, they, what, they, what their vision are and what my vision are, if they're going to buy into my vision, and try to uh, you know, judge, take it from there. Uh, I thought that you know, they underachieved yes, last year. They have, they have enough talent that they should have done better. And hopefully that they can, you know, once we, once the, the, the summer is a big summer for them in terms of getting in the weight room, making sure they take care of their responsibilities in terms of academics and come back ready uh, for the start of, uh, start of the school year.